Once it's fixed, okay. So we'll note know that for the next one. Okay. Yep. <laughs> um, so uh, during the prep, I tried to duplicate my screen and it just didn't work out. So I'm just going to drag in and uh, bear with me. So um, what you see here is a, a pre-staged automation account. Uh, it has some DC configurations in it, some node configurations. Uh, it has one node which is unresponsive for some time. Uh, and I'm going to uh, use this automation account together with a VM I have deployed in my Azure Stack environment. And not only is it just a VM I've deployed in my Azure Stack environment, it is a Linux VM. So I'm going to try and drop it. And my application crashed. So what I did is uh, uh, I deployed a SendOS 7.2 VM in Azure Stack. Uh, I took the uh, DSC for Linux VM extension from Azure. I dropped it in Azure Stack. It's, it's not uh, delivered with it by default, but it, it all just works. So that's uh, already a good statement for uh, the improvements they already made in Azure Stack. Um, we have something. Yeah. yeah, and there we have Azure Stack. So, um, underneath Azure Stack, of course, there is Hyper-V, and uh, we have here a VM console connection to this CentOS machine. And just to uh, uh, give you an idea, there's no smoke and mirror mirrors there, and this is really awkward because I cannot duplicate my screen. Let's uh, do a PS aux. Let's check if the OMI service is already running. Can you increase the font? Uh, it will be difficult on a console, but anyway, there's no process currently running uh, uh, OMI daemon. So uh, LCM is not installed. The DC for Linux extension will actually pull in all the packages required, install the uh, OMI daemon, install LCM, and then we'll pull in a metaconfig and onboard this node into Azure Automation DC. So that's, that's kind of the demo we're going to do. And I'm having difficulty switching here. Now, uh, Azure Stack also works with the Azure RM PowerShell modules. The only thing we need to do is give it another environment. So firstly, I already authenticated here. This is why I uh, commented this out, but uh, I would run, I wouldn't break that. Oops. This is my normal keyboard, so it should work. <laughs> uh, can, you, can you scale it up a little bit? Zoom it up. Yes, I can. Great, more. Okay, so um, we add the Azure Stack environment to our Azure RM uh, PowerShell uh, session here by uh, specifying a whole bunch of parameters. And this is why I had it, have it in this uh, hash table. And uh, it's, it's not persistent, so you have to do this every time you start uh, a new PowerShell session and you load up this module. This is what you have to do to uh, have it target Azure Stack. So n right now I have the, the correct endpoints available in my uh, PowerShell session to target Azure Stack. There we go. As you can see, it's just a ref now. And I authenticated against it with my Azure AD account. And I use that same account to authenticate against Azure. So this is my uh, in Azure subscription. And I need that to acquire the, the keys uh, we just talked about. So I will roll over these keys when the demo is done. So uh, <laughs> I don't mind you looking at them right now. Uh, if you jot them down really quick, then uh, maybe you can onboard your notes into my account as well. There is a limit uh, for the free edition for five, so you can do a denial service if you're really quick. <laughs> um, I'm going to select my uh, Azure Stack profile right now. So now I'm targeting Azure Stack. First off, I'm going to acquire the VM and have it stored in this uh, uh, variable here. And as you can see, it's an OpenLogic uh, CentOS 7.2 uh, VM. Then, we're, one of the uh, commandlets we just talked about, set Azure RM VM extension, uh, will be used to uh, have that DSC for Linux extension being pulled into this VM and have it uh, configured to do the, the onboarding. And, uh, 
what's new in the DSC for Linux 2, version 2 extension, is they have added this register mode. And that register mode is actually, as well, a meta.mov precompiled in the DSC package with some placeholders for the keys and the subscription ID, or the account ID. Um, we're going to have the keys and the endpoint in the protected settings. We do protected settings to keep those settings away from uh, visibility in the portal or through PowerShell once we have uh, actually started the deployment. So there will, be <coughs> at, uh, there will be targeted against that extension. And after that, if we look at the configuration, we, we won't see that information anymore. It's gone. So it's a bit of a security measure just to keep stuff uh, from sight. So and this actually won't take very long. Uh, Linux uh, is uh, pretty quick, so that's uh, we can have a quick look if we can see the. Oh you my demon! Say that Linux is faster than Windows. Well, m maybe Nano will be okay, but <laughs> for now, uh, yeah, onboarding will be will be triggered. Uh, we can have a quick look in the portal to see uh, actually this functionality reflect uh, there. So uh, what I've done here is I tagged a resource group with uh, AADC tag, and uh, here's that VM. We just, and it, I hope this is visible in the back. You see now it's updating, so uh, actually what I did is no smoke and mirrors. And it's still a beta, right, so. Yeah. It always works faster when you do a demo in your room. Definitely. Let's see if we already have the OMI daemon. So OMI daemon is installed. I, I'm, I'm thinking I'm making my point here. Uh, let's see if the node is already appearing here. And there it is. DC01 node, just on board. I think you can see it from the timer here. It's the 1556. So we have here, uh, uh, we have here one consistent way of managing our private and public cloud. We have, uh, uh, how you say that, hybrid, <laughs> conf hybrid configuration manager in a heterogeneous environment. So that's, yeah. that's the end of this demo. It's yeah. awesome. And then we have a slide for the, another, the next no, demo, right? No, no, that's the one for both. All right. So for local VM. Yeah, okay. Local VM. Where's my mouse? Okay, another VM is running here on this laptop. Uh, it's a Windows Server 2012 R2 uh, core with PowerShell v5 RTM installed. Uh, and uh, that's about it. Uh, and I'm going to onboard this into the service as well in a different manner. So. And I'm doing that using PowerShell, of course. Um, first off, we have our uh, credentials, and I think I already loaded them up. Uh, yes, I did, that's a good thing. Uh, so I will um, uh, log into the Azure service, acquire my token, and again, uh, reference that automation account in this variable here. As you can see, it's the same DEC demo01 automation account. And now I'm going to uh, download that uh, precompiled meta.mov using that uh, frequently long commandlet <laughs> name. And uh, this warning here is, is put in place because uh, uh, the Azure automation team, they want you to know that once you download this meta.mov, it will contain those keys in a readable format. So everybody who downloads it like this can, can read those keys. And this is also why it's a good idea to just uh, roll that key over uh, once you are done with that meta.mov because uh, the, meta of the, the keys aren't used anymore after the, the registration has taken place. It will actually re be replaced with certificate-based authentication. So as you can see here, is the, this is the meta.mov I just pulled down from the Azure Automation Service. And you can see the registration keys here. And Something else what is uh, bothering me uh, a little bit is that if I want to adjust the settings for the LCM, I have to do it in text now, and I don't like that really, really well, uh, really much. 
I'd rather do it in, uh, in PowerShell code, of course. So uh, again, I will acquire the, uh, the keys here. And I have here a little configuration decorated with uh, DEC local configuration manager uh, attribute, I think it's called. Um, I have a, a parameter for the keys here. It will take the, the keys from the pipeline. And I will have some settings here. So apply an autocorrect. Uh, and it, 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 it's allowed to reboot. So, uh, and actually, this, this isn't documented anywhere, but uh, we can use Azure Automation DEC not, not only as a reporting service and a, a configuration service, but we, we can pick and choose. So we can use reporting only, but we can also just pull down resources. Yeah. So even if you work with a push, you can get your needed DSC resources from a pool server. Isn't that awesome? Before, yeah. you would need it to do that manually and take care of that. Now you can automate that stuff. And there's a nifty little thing to know is that when you pull in a module into Azure Automation DSC and it's a resource module, uh, you will only see in the portal the latest version, right? There's only one version of that module available for Azure Automation. But if you do the old version first, it will drop a zip on the, on the pool endpoint. And if you do the next version after that, it will drop another zip and the earlier zip will still be available to be pulled down. It's just not visible in the portal anymore. So if you stage it right and you create some, some run books, then yeah. you can seed your pool server uh, in, a, in, a, yeah. in a good fashion. So it's a little bit of a hack to get a, a side by side module versioning kind of thing. But if you know that after this session, then you yeah. can use that. And it's recorded, so everybody will know. Yeah. Uh, again, the registration key, we have the two endpoints defined, and uh, my settings uh, are uh, without typos, uh, and they, they ended up without typos in this meta.mov. Um, so what I'm doing now is I rename, uh, well, I'm going to copy this. No, I'm renaming this file to uh, IP address. Those, uh, that VM I'm targeting is running in a workgroup environment, and um, um, I'm going to create a sim session to push that meta.mov over to it. Hoping I type my password correct. From the looks of it, I did. So now we have a sim session with that server core uh, system. And let's have a look at the LCM current state. So it's in push mode, and uh, it's an apply and monitor, so it's never been touched before. Now I will push that meta.mov over and have the LCM uh, onboarded into Azure Automation DSC, hopefully. And there we go. So the node is now onboarded. Let's refresh. And here we have the local node. So that's pretty fast. If we look at the LCM configuration right now, you can see that we have the resource module managers and the reporting uh, uh, in place, but we are still in push mode. And we do that because, well, you, you can use the reporting only functionality, which is actually something uh, blocked about by the Azure Automation team as being a, a, like a conformance reporting right. for, for auditors uh, kind of solution. Uh, but, but right now, we also will use this to uh, uh, well, to download the resource as well. So. Yeah. so reporting is there just to support the companies that still have some concerns about storing the actual configuration in a cloud. So in that scenario, they will still have configuration on premises, but the reporting part will be in a cloud. So that's a good solution for them. All right, so now we have that node in, in this variable. What we're going to do is we're going to push a, a configuration over to it using the uh, XCRED SSP resource. So I've uploaded that, that resource into my automation account earlier on. And uh, just to prove it's, it's not on that machine yet, so it's not there, OK? So I'll just compile that configuration and send it over that sim session. And we will see it uh, conform into the desired state now. And you see, ah, it, it needed an extra resource, so it downloaded it from the automation account. And it needed a reboot, and it was allowed to, because I set that LCM settings myself. Can 
we file a, a change request to have this default? <laughs> <laughs> And it's downloaded and it has the configuration applied for X credit SSP. Uh, so we downloaded the module and, and everything worked out uh, nicely. Yeah. Nicely, yeah. So next we have a little bit of the uh, reporting functionality to show. Uh, the team made some, some uh, the Azure Automation team made some good efforts parsing that, uh, that JSON information. And now you can see. Um, Actual the the resource the version it's using and it's compliant and it's a it's a, it's a it's a good portal experience. So um, and uh, with that I want to close this uh, this demo as well. So yeah. So please. Yeah. Well, let's the switching. I hope. So I in the.